I really believe that there's a huge collapse coming. I mean, with inflation at these levels, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how anybody can look around the world with COVID, inflation, gas prices. You can't even sixty-one uh, percent labor participation rate. Uh, these ships out over California, and just and look all, at Tesla and, and, the, and the government um, spending trillions on nothing. And then you have the tapering that's going to occur. Yeah. I don't know how anybody looks around the world and says, wow, this is the best place. I should put all my money in the stock market. Never been an investment in the history of the world that has gone straight up. I mean, they all go up with pullbacks. Luka Doncic, you priced in about seven championships for this guy. And now that he's in year, what, five of his career and Dallas is no closer to a championship since basically his rookie year. Lord have mercy, look at this one, two year low. Blue Prism serial number to 199 sold last night for $22,800. The high price on this thing was $78,000, over $50,000 falling out of Luca. Guys, nothing is safe in the sports card world. Stop listening to these guys who are telling you what to buy. I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. Lord have mercy, they've been wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong again. Buy more to tease cards. Again, and I just gave you an example in this video how your boy hobby hero, Jeff Wilson, was wrong again. So stay safe out there. Your cards, your portfolio, your investments are declining, but we'll be back here on Sports Card Radio to tell you all about the scams, scandals, and shadiness in the hobby. And until next time, it dips. It is clear he doesn't know cards. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I got the card. Of course, the most important part, I've now got to give them the money. It's $100,000. We're going to do this by wire transfer. As fun as it would be to count $100,000 out on the table right here, I think it'd be a little safer to do it by wire transfer. So let's do it that way. We're going to get this going right now. That's right, your hobby hero, Jeff Wilson, purchased one of these cards just a month ago at the National for $100,000. He's already down close to 15% on his investment. Lord have mercy. It's surprising how harsh the card world comes down on me and my brother for some of the videos that we've done. I want to say this, sports card radio, you should be ashamed of yourself. So he goes around and he's getting their opinions because he's a newbie to the industry. You know, he says the hobby we love. Well, he just started loving it, you know, when it became a big money making thing. Why would somebody who's making a billion dollars, a, a million dollars a day, need to sell you on his ideas. Think about it. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't see Elon Musk and uh, Bezos doing infomercials or selling you on how to run a successful business. Yeah, I, I worry too about, you know, the possibility of some, some sort of uh, almost like Ponzi scheme, right? Like these cards started taking off when people started touting them themselves and selling them themselves. So let's say that I'm a millionaire and you're a millionaire, Jason. And oh. I call you up and I say, hey, I'm too much of an option, and I, I want you to pay $400,000 for it. And that's going to hit the papers, and everybody is going to know that that's over 400. So then the next time it sells, what will it sell for? You know? I mean, well, yeah, no, I, right. I kind of think that may have been done. I actually believe that that's how, like, my job thing started getting so crazy. And I, and I think it's true because if you think about some of these guys, like Gary V and all these, some of these guys that like, you know, are big dollar dudes that like all of a sudden mention one person's name, kind of like almost in passing or just some ideas they're thinking about. And then the very next day, those same cards are going through the roof. I, I, I'm kind of convinced it's a bunch of rich people just flipping these things to make headlines so that it sells for more the next time. I don't know. A bunch of friends get together, sell them to each other. It is so hard to believe that there's this many people paying this much money for cards and they're all collectors. I mean, that's just not the way it is, right? Uh, you're drawn to these things because you think you can make money. For example, if I buy a $100,000 card, I would sell 25 shares of it at $10,000 a piece to people around the world. Just like that, the card goes from 100,000 to 250,000 and I make money. Once I receive my money, I then put the card for sale online but I have one of my friends or buddies in the small community buy that card for $250,000. And what happens? The whole industry gets excited. 
Card value more than doubled. The investors get paid back their money. Everyone's happy. The card market's booming. And they repeat this over and over and over again. Sounds amazing, right? But this is the reason why sports cards are overly inflated right now. If you look at any of the uh, FANG stocks over the last three months, four months, you know, many of them are down 50%. And you don't hear people talking about them much anymore. And uh, apparently people aren't buying them like they were before, right? Uh, you could buy those things, you could be a total moron. And all you have to do is make that decision. And that's how the card hobby's been. But as we see with those stocks coming down 50%, I mean, go look, to, go take a look at some of these uh, NASDAQ stocks. Just pump, just pump, most of them, just pump. And uh, that's maybe what we need in the hobby to get back to normalcy. You know, I, I'm all in favor of the hobby going up. I'm all in favor of card prices going up, you know, but it's healthy to go up a little at a time. It's not healthy to go like this and like this and like this and like this. And uh, it's not fun. It's certainly not fun if you're a collector. It's certainly not fun if you're racking up your credit card um, to buy these things, knowing that you could flip them and then one day you can't flip them. You know, I remember during the uh, housing boom, uh, nobody could go wrong. Everybody's flipping homes, flipping homes, flipping homes, going higher, higher, and boom, the bottom fell out. They all went bankrupt and uh, they got caught at the top. It's like the bank robber that robs four banks and gets away with it. But that fifth one, he goes to prison for the rest of his life, you know? Uh, eventually you get caught when you're greedy and, and not paying attention and not careful. And that's throughout history, throughout history. The Roaring Twenties didn't end too well. The dot-com boom didn't end too, too well. The housing boom didn't end too well. We're probably in another one now. So, uh, you know, just be careful out there. I've been through a, <laughs> I've been through a lot of different uh, booms and busts in my time. And I, I have been warning for a while. It's also the nine that hit a new, new two-year low last night. That's right, at $13,800 in the same exact auction, a two-year low on the Michael Jordan PSA 9 rookie card. Now, the pumpers in this industry, including Jeff Wilson. For when it comes to Ben Simmons, I am buying. After 24 months of steady declines in the sports card market, this guy is still producing videos where he's telling you what to buy and what to sell. You're more than welcome to listen to him if you want to. Now, over at Sports Card Radio, posted an article earlier this week, aforementioned Jeff Wilson says that he has nearly 25% of his net worth tied up into cards. Now, not necessarily the worst idea, but if you bought at the top like he did and kind of pumped everybody to buy at the top, chances are he's underwater on a lot of that. Anthony Davis is a player whose cards are criminally undervalued. It gets uh, it gets hard to watch this stuff. Uh, so you could tell in his video he's never seen these cards before. How are you a card expert? How are <laughs> how are you telling other people what to do? Somebody made a comment on my comment that maybe he's just pretending uh, for the benefit of all his viewers that he doesn't know. And I'm like, what kind of cult answer is that? Like, you, this guy is such a god to you that you assume he's playing dumb for the benefit of all of us? Are you kidding me? And I'm, I'm not going to make a second video apologizing to the man. I haven't understood about <laughs> Jeff Wilson. I got a lot of heat for that. I know. I, I saw Blue Jacket. And I'm like, you know what? I probably just, I probably just. <laughs> Blue, Blue Jacket 66. Because I'll tell you, I saw a video right after that that pissed me off. And I was like, man, I, I, I wish I could take that back. <laughs> Because yeah, you know what he did, he, he and and he done a couple shady, in my opinion, like he paid twenty thousand dollars for that nineteen fifty two Bowman pack, mm -hmm. made it sound like he was paying it, but then they're breaking it in the next right. scene. Well, so he know, didn't. Pay, so I don't think he paid that. Well, and no. then and then no, he buys no. that Michael Jordan star card for a hundred thousand dollars. Today he uploaded a video where his friend says it's worth fifty. So. I'm not sure he paid that. Like, I think it right. might be staged. You know, I am concerned with protecting our hobby, and I worry that people listen to this guy. Now, when I speak out, I'm speaking out about, uh, against the scammers. There is a place in this hobby for flippers, for dealers, for collectors, for hybrids. I'm the first to say that. But you're, I, I'm talking scammers. 
And when I talk scammers, people think I'm talking flippers. I'm not. I'm not. There's a difference between flippers who I might not like what they're doing to the hobby. I might not like the prices that increases because of that's different than scammers. Right. And I'm speaking out against the scammers and the people that are lying to you and the guys that, you know, are charging you $195 a month for their advice. And there's not a single person that can come on. I've seen no evidence if somebody says I pay 195 to this guy every month and I'm making a killing. Show me those people and I'll be the first to apologize and I'll be the first to congratulate. Yeah. But I haven't I haven't seen a single video of any of those. Right. So we we have the true collectors, right? Like like the collectors, the ones that, you know, you just you want to own these cards and you you collect and then you have the investment type. And, And we've always had that. Right. And you need both. Because without the investors, without the card shops, without the people who sell the cards, where are we going to get them? So you need both, but it's got to be like a healthy thing. And, you know, with 2020, uh, and, and, and I truly believe that these were guys, how this started really um, was guys selling to their friends for high amounts of money, making the news, and then turning around and selling it again on auction. And it seems like almost a Ponzi scheme where these top cars are just selling over and over again, higher, higher, higher each time. Now that has, that has pulled back now, but we have all these influencers that have come into the hobby and they're better at making videos than us, you know, they, and they're talking about, uh, investing. Uh, and so they're talking to a different crowd than we are. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, they're making a big splash and they've started to control They've, they've seized control of our hobby. Let's face it, because look where the prices are. That, that, that's pretty much all you need to know about that to know that they've seized control. Now we have a lot of young collectors that are in, in this hobby now, and I am just worried about them getting burned because if they're listening to some of these guys, and I was just pointing out like some really, some things that just aren't good investments, like just right, right from the get go. You know, like paying ten thousand dollars for a nineteen eighty eight clear box. Any like you and I opened those back in the day. They are notoriously off center. Like you're not going to get a whole bunch of tens out of those cards. You're just not. If you open those packs, you know what they're like. And you know he didn't because right. that's the way it is. But if you're young, you don't know that. You're like, oh, 1988 box, let me buy it. They're all going to be 10. No, they're not. <laughs> all, all cards that came out of a pack back then weren't 10s. Look at the 88 Donner's baseball. Those things, I mean, good luck, you know, getting a bunch of 10s in, in a box of those. They're notoriously off center. So, you know, it's more of a, the hobby. Of, you know, I think, I think, I think us collectors, and, and I said this, you know, no matter what happens, we take it. We pay. We're the ones that, that pay. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, No matter what they do, if they want to take a year to grade our cards, we take it and we move on. If they want to grade trimmed cards or altered cards, we take it and we move on. If they want to double, triple, quadruple their prices for grading, we take it and we move on. If a box is selling, you know, goes from goes up to a thousand dollars a box for a box of tops, we we pay it, we move on. But what I'm seeing now. And Dustin, Dustin and Blake just did a, a, a video on this and he showed all the YouTubers that are no longer making card content. And it's exactly what I've been fearing is that you're pricing uh, true collectors, the ones that drive this hobby, the ones that will be here when the hobby tanks again, if it tanks, uh, you're driving them out of the, out of the hobby. You're wow. pricing them out of the hobby. People are getting frustrated now with this, all the, you know, the flipping and uh, outrageous prices. It, and that's bad for the hobby because you and I went through it in the early nineties. Right, right. You know, everybody, everybody got greedy. They started overproducing stuff. They started raising price. Everybody was hoarding it. And then what happened? It took 30 years to come back 30 years. Right. Right. And, and uh, if it crashes this time, it will be 10 times as bad as that. People weren't spending hundreds of thousands and millions on cards back then. I can't sit here and go, hey, collect all those 87 Maguires and they're going to be, you know, just offhandedly. I, we do have some sort of response. It just changes. I'm not sitting here trying to sell you anything. But. Yeah, I mean, I think the responsibility lies in the viewer. 
it it's like, does. I yes. mean, they, these creators have every right to do whatever the hell they want. Yes. But they also, we also have a right to call them out when they're a scammer or they're That's totally wrong. Right. I mean, you know, it's fine. Whatever somebody wants to do. Right. But it's just like, you have to understand that a lot of what he shows is fantasy. Right. It's fantasy. Well, you know, he's, he's paying prices that that's not what those cards sell for. And uh, I just hope nobody, you know, gets duped. It's very entertaining. I am. I, I don't want to say I hate watching. Watch, I watch like all these guys because I want to know what's going on in my hobby. You know, uh, so I watch everybody. I right. want to see yeah. what's being said and so forth. Right. Like, who's scamming I, I, who? And, yeah, and you know, that's it. the education. I used to do that on eBay too because if you don't know what the scams are, you might fall for one. So I like to be aware, you know, you gotta look, do out, your due look out for myself. Yeah, you gotta do your due diligence. Love the hobby, love collecting. Do something nice for someone. Thanks for watching.